Hello, guys! In the previous episode, we developed the body fur of the monkey in Yeti. We are now ready to discover our new grooming workflow between Yeti and Unreal Engine 5. Don't miss also the next episode, where we will work on the fur shading and motion capture system. Let's start to set up the work in Unreal. If you want to work with Groom in Unreal, you have to make sure to activate these two plugins, the Alembic Groom Importer and the Groom One. So, after importing the model, we created this simple scene where we can work on the look development of the character and uh, we can rotate all the character and as well change the camera. We are almost ready to export our first Groom from Maya to Unreal. But first we need to create an attribute node and assign this ID name and we also rename it with body and assign a value here. So why this attribute? Simply because in a moment we are going to have a different partition like the body, the mohawk, the fur in the face and by just assigning a different number in this tab Unreal is going to split the groom in different partition and we are going to have the power to assign different shaders, change the thickness and add other features in each different area. We are now ready to export the groom, just make sure to set the viewport density to 10 so we are going to have the full amount of fur and you just need to select the Yeti node, go in the Yeti tab and export Unreal BC directly inside your Unreal folder. So while importing the groom in Unreal, I just tweaked the rotation and scale import value to be sure the groom is aligned with the model. So I created a blueprint class and imported my model on it. Now we are going to add a groom component in the scene and we are going to set in the groom asset space the groom that we just imported. And by just doing that, we already have a full groom in our scene. And I think it's pretty amazing that thanks to Unreal, we have now the power to check our groom in a full turntable in just a matter of seconds. Let's check now the groom asset that was created in the moment we import the groom in Unreal. As we can see, there are different tabs. The one that we most use is Trans, where we have the power to change the, the width and also the tip scale and as well other attributes useful for our groom. In the moment we are going to create more partition Yeti and uh, adding more attributes with different ID numbers we are going to have here different partition and we are going to be able to change the width and add the different material to each different parts. We are going to see all of this in just a bit. It's time to assign a new shader to our groom. When developing the groom, we prefer to use a grey shader to have a more neutral preview of the work. As soon as we are going to be happy with the look of the groom, we are going to switch with the final shader. The first shader for Unreal that we are going to use is one that we created here at Antepost and that we will make it soon available to everyone. In this shader we are able to tweak the melanin of the fur, so the color, control the root, the top color and as well give a variation and hold their feature like assigning a new map to control the color of other area of the fur. So now we can select the monkey, select the groom inside the blueprint and assign the grey fur shader. With this grey fur shader we can now check the work we have done in Yeti properly. I think it's already looking great, but probably we can do some tweak on it. So for example looking at these big clumps I see that here they have a, a stronger shape compared to the reference here, a bit more open. So I think we can fix that on Maya. So to tweak these clamps, of course, we need to go in this clumpy node that control the big shape of the clamp. So opening the node, we can play a bit with the tip attraction and we can see that we are going that direction. So if you see here, there is a nice layering on the fur and this is created because the clamp have different length. So we can tweak that by just touching a bit the minimum length and probably also in the other grow node so we are going to have more variation of length nice and then what we can do 
maybe in the flyaways we can do the same and probably we can add also a bit of more density of the flyaways as well to blend more the shapes of the clamp and I think we can send it back to Unreal so we select the last node and exporting it as usual by clicking the Yeti tab and export Unreal Alembic in Unreal we will just need to click import And we are going to have our groom ready to check in a full turntable. Such a cool workflow. So I think now the body fair is looking great. And it's time to do a quick overview about how we develop the other section of the groom. So here we have the final groom of the monkey. And we can see that for each different partition that we alight with different color, we have a set of guides. So for the hair we have this set. And then for the body we have this other set that we updated adding a bit of more density of guides and playing a bit better with the flow then we have another one for the face this actually is going to control two different partition this area lighted in red that is going to create this uh, kind of funny mask of fur all around the face and it's going to control also the pitch pads that's not so visible but we have it here that are like really tiny hair that fill all the face. Then we also have the eyebrows and the whiskers. These in the render are going to look exactly like the guys that we deform and sculpted. Let's check now how we develop the Yeti graph. So here we have the final graph of the groom work and maybe it can look a bit complex from here because you know there are a lot of nodes but if we zoom in a bit we can see that, for example, the structure that we created for the groom of the body, so the main fair plus the flyaways, it's practically the same in the other section. So the other section are using exactly the same structure. So let's give a look to each section now. In this area, we have the whiskers and the eyebrows. The setup for them is really simple. We just import the whiskers first, the guides that we created in the viewport. And after that, we convert them from strands, that are basically the guides, to fibers. The scraggle is helping to break up the linearity of the guides, so you know there is a bit of more variation. And after that, there is a width, that uh, is just temporary because, of, of course, in Unreal we are going to have another slider to control it. This is just for preview. Then we have this attributed heap that we need for Unreal understanding how to split the fair in different partition. And then we have this node that is needed only if you need to render in our node. Moving to the next section where we develop the Mohawk. Here we can see that the setup is pretty similar to the one of the body. So we have a line for the flyaways and another one for the main groom. The setup is simpler than before because there is just one line of clamping, so not a line like in the body. So we can see what's happening here. There is a scatter, a grow, a comb that we studied before. And then in the line down the same nodes plus a scraggle to create a bit of more variation of the flow in the, in the clamp. And after that we have the two scraggle, one that uh, control and affect the overall fur, adding a bit of fuzziness to all the fur and breaking up the clamps. And another one that is just affecting a few hair. So we have some crazy hair that go out of the shape. After we have a width, after we have a shader just for previewing the fur with a different color. And after we have the merge, the merge with uh, the flyaways. In the flyaways we did the practically the same that we did in the body. So after scatter, grow comb, we have the two scraggle. And then we have the transform that scale up the groom. After that, we have, as always, the ID to create a different partition in Unreal. In the following section of the graph, we have the fair in the face. And we can see that the setup is practically the same. So we have again flyaways and uh, main groom setup. Here, the setup is practically the same of the one in the body. So we have the final line of the rendered fair the line of the small clamps and the line of the bigger clamps. Then we have one of the most simple partition of the graph, that is the one of the pitch fads. To create that we just needed a scatter grow comb and a single scraggle to create a bit of variation in the hair and then the width. And as always we want 
the attribute ID with a different default number for Unreal. And in the final section, we have the groom work of the body that we created in the previous video. So if you see now, it's practically the same setup. There are just a few differences that we had. That is this uh, scraggle weight that is controlling the power of the scraggle in different area. So if we see here the texture, the body scraggle weight, we can see that around the neck we didn't want so much scraggle, so we painted with a darker value. We also created three different textures to control each line of nodes, so one for the main density, another one for the smaller clump, another one for the bigger clump. So here is the texture that controls the density of the body fur, and if you remember we painted dark to have less hair all around the neck and more hair in the chest and in the shoulder. This texture will control the density of the smaller clumps and as we painted with a flat grey means that we didn't want variation of sides and number of clumps. Then we have this texture that will control the density of the bigger clumps. So for example in this area we are going to have more curves that means more smaller clumps compared to this area we are going to have less curves and bigger clumps. After we have all the section ready we just need to connect them in a merge node. Remember that if you open a merge node, you can choose the number of input that the merge is going to have. After doing that, we activate the node and we make sure that each one of these attributes has a different number, so Unreal will be able to split the groom correctly. After we have everything ready, we can just export again our Alembic file to Unreal. And here we have the preview of the full groom with a grey shader. And once again, it's amazing to preview our groom work so quickly, with a cool turntable. Just the time to export the Lambic cache from Magia to Unreal. Don't miss the next episode, where we will work on the shading of the monkey, and we will show how we set up the motion capture system for the animation. Do you want to know more about grooming? Check our new course. This course will start from the basics of grooming, and I've been in more advanced techniques, giving you the right tools to build your portfolio and start your career as grooming artist. We joined lots of cool projects during this year, from big blockbuster movies to TV commercial, where we develop a solid workflow that is easy and adaptable to different kinds of grooms. In the chapter 1, we'll focus on the basics of Yeti, introducing the tools and techniques we'll need to build amazing grooms. In the chapter 2, we'll groom a realistic animal fur and dive in in the grooming workflow we use in our professional works. You will get everything you need for the course, including models and lighting scene. Also, you will have access to a private channel in our Discord Antepost Lab, where you can share your work and get feedback from us. So, let's get started! We can't wait to share our experience with you and dive in in the magic world of grooming.